Hey everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and it's Triple Play Day and I am here with Natalie and Misty and we have an awesome fun tutorial today all based on the lovely leaves tutorial. Right. That block, so we've done some awesome things with it and I'm up first. So today we're going to start and this is actually Misty's project and we don't usually let you see those first <laughs> but you get a sneak peek at Misty's first. But mine ended up being table runners. So I made these two table runners. They're beautiful. And they're gorgeous. The reason I went with table runners is because the blocks I ended up with, you know, I had lots of leaves, but when I put them together in the four, four leaves all together, I didn't really end up with enough blocks to make a quilt. So I opted for these great, gorgeous runners. You know, you've heard me talk, I have a long table, uh, feed a lot of children, so I love a nice long runner. And the fabric, I thought, just suited itself beautifully for, um, it really does. for a nice runner. Perfect so, for fall. Yep. Uh, yes, and this actually, my doing it first, will actually set up the making of the leaf so that you guys can follow and show your things along. And it'll just, it'll just be like clockwork. It'll be great. So to make my fall festival table runners, you will need one layer cake. And we've used Hope Blooms by Kansas Trebles Quilters for Moda. You will need one quarter yard of accent fabric, one half a yard of two different background fabrics, your outer border is a half a yard, your backing is one and a half yards for each runner. You'll also need some heat and bond. We have one package here and you will need a squaring tool. All right. So what I did with mine is, and you know, I love the cardboard on the back of the layer cake, and I'm always making some sort of a cutting diagram so that I can see uh, exactly how it's going to work, because I want to be efficient with my use of fabric, and I want to make sure that I get everything I need out of it. So when I went to cut these, I stacked a light and a dark, and you can see right here, I have this light one underneath right there, a light and a dark, and made two cuts at a time so that I could do a leaf and four geese. Now on these runners, you'll see that I have four leaves together in the middle, and then they're all surrounded with flying geese, and they, but I've just set them differently and given them a different look. So we're gonna get all those pieces out of our square, our 10 inch square. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cut and cut this in half the long way. So now we have a five by um, 10 inch rectangle and I'm going to cut this piece off right here and cut it in half again. So now we have two five inch squares. So again, if you did have um, charm packs, you could actually make it with that as well. And so Natalie, I'm gonna put these two together. I'm okay. gonna have you sew all the way around the outside because we're gonna make four half square triangles out of this right. and we need that for the body of our leaf. We also need four two and a half inch squares. Actually, we only need three. We're gonna have one piece left over. And so I'm gonna cut this square into four, like this. Now this, these two that are still together, these are gonna be our flying geese. And so my geese are all solid in the middle with, with the lighter on the outside. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these in two and a half inch strips like this. And I should get four out of this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stack all these red ones up. And my white ones are going to be cut in two and a half inch squares because those are going to be the corners on our flying geese. Um, because we're using two and a half inch squares, we're going to need to cut our geese down to four and a half. So I'm going to stack these four pieces up right here and just make one cut. So I'm going to lay this right here and I'm going to make one cut off the edge right here, just a half an inch to take my five inch rectangle down to four and a half. There's your, your little bit of waste. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not, Not bad. bad. <laughs> and then these we're going to line up also like this. And I am going to um, cut these into two and a half inch squares so we can put them on the sides. All right, so the way we're gonna make our flying geese is we are going to take a long rectangle and we're gonna put our corners on like this. And we are gonna sew 
we are just going to sew straight down this side. Now you can draw a line, you can iron a line, or you can use the diagonal seam tape, which we love. And so Natalie, I'm going to have you make one of those. Okay. And I'm going to get started here on the half square triangles. So this is how we're going to make our half square triangles. Natalie has sewn all the way around the outside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this diagonally both directions like this. And over here again. And then we are going to square these to two and a half. And I'm going to use the clearly perfect slotted trimmer. And I'm just going to slide it to one side right here. And Misty, if you'll make sure that iron is good and hot, I'll let you gotcha. press these open. This is a great way to uh, square blocks. You can use any squaring tool you like. Um, some people like the block lock ruler. Some like just a regular square ruler. So just you're, remember, you're different. You're squaring these to two and a half, right? Two and a half, and different. You know, different tools make sense to different brains. So uh, it was. It wasn't until I got this clearly perfect slotted trimmer that I felt like. I could really square a <laughs> half square triangle. <clears throat> All right. And one more. So now on this right here, Natalie has sewn these down. We're going to go ahead and trim these little sides off right here. And you're going to make all your flying geese the same way. And then you're just going to have them in a pile. And they will be all, all different colors, all different, you know, uh, backgrounds. I'm just going to trim this off right here. Want me to press it? Sure. All right. All right. This is waste. All right. So now we're ready to make our leaf. And we just need to take um, from our blocks over here, we have these four little half square triangles and our blocks these that we cut out of our layer cake are also two and a half inches so they should all match up just perfectly and what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these background blocks is going to be our stem now the stem on the leaf let me show you the leaf let me show you what I'm talking about right here so this is how our block is going to look and this is our little stem right here and there are several ways to do these stems and I've done all of them and this time I just did it a little bit different. It, the leaf turned out to be a little bit tinier than I thought. You know, what do you think? Misty's is big. <laughs> I know. Mine is tiny this time. You know, we <laughs> kind of swapped places. But um, to make this little stem, what I did was I got some um, heat and bond, and I ironed it onto this little strip of background fabric like this, and I just cut a half an inch. Now, if you, if you cut a half an inch, there's no room to turn that under. So we're literally just going to take this like this, and we are going to iron it across, uh, diagonally across our piece of background fabric right here, our square for the corner. And so, Misty, I'm just going to lay this across here, corner to corner like that. Did you cut it off? Uh, do you want um, I did it. Put no. like a pressing pad or something? I'm afraid it's going to stick. You could. It <laughs> doesn't stick to your... It does kind of stick. Mat. It does kind of stick to your ironing pad. I, I have to say, I do have a few little sticky marks, but it's oh. better than your iron. So just all right, don't well, look. Would... Close your eyes. Okay. Just close your eyes. <laughs> all right. So then I just pulled it off, okay. and then I just clipped it from there. So you're if we way braver little... than me. <laughs> so I would just use a scrap piece of fabric, set, and like put a, under a it. Little, you know, a little square or back quarter or something like that that you don't care about. Yeah. Some trimmings from the backing of And I just make it work. So uh, whatever. But, and it would works. Protect, it works right. great. That would protect your ironing pad if you had just a sheet underneath it that you could then it just It totally toss. would. It totally would. You're absolutely right. Uh, so, um, yeah, however you want to do that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> anyway, on this edge then, you can do a little straight stitch. I did a little zigzag, you know, on mine. You can see right here if, if we come in real close. And it's a table runner, so it's not going to take a lot of washing or, you know, uh, that sort of thing. I mean, you don't have I kids do, at home anymore. I Mine take say, a lot of I washing. I do find that I wash my table runners more often yes, than my quilts. I agree. <laughs> all right. Well, whatever works then. You know. <laughs> We're just going to disagree today. We'll have That's to disagree. Right. It, well, there's more than one way to do things, You're right. right? Absolutely. Totally. All right. So let me show you how I lay this out. And um, we are going to take and we're going to put our plain square up here in the corner. And then we're going to put two of our triangles that face inward like this. And then there's another plain square right here. And then we've got two more over here that go inward. And these go the same direction, and these go the same direction. You know, I have to make these little mantras for myself. This guy's going to go here, 
And we are going to have this one here, this little red guy here, and then one over here. And so I lay out these blocks to make sure what I'm doing. You can sew these together in three rows of three. I tended to kind of do like sections uh, when I did it. Did you guys um, have a way that you did your leaves that was? So I did mine the way that you teach us a lot where you string piece these two, these two, these two. Yes. And then and you then go add. back to the top and add this one, this one, this one. Right. And then, you, then they're all connected. Yes. That's how I pieced mine. That's how yeah. I did mine also. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of what I do as well. And so however you guys want to put these together, at the end of the day, we're just going to sew these together. So um, Natalie, you want to go ahead and sew these together? So, sure. So let's do these two. Oops. And then these I've two. Just messed this and up. And then these two. I've got to make sure I'm putting these together in the right direction. Right, like this. this. Like that. Okay. And then these go along I the side. I separated them and got got confused. Well, a little double checking is and always And this right. actually, this way of um, chain piecing is a very, very smart way to do it and keep all your pieces in place. Yeah. Because literally, if you don't cut your threads, everything should be going exactly the right way. Yeah, it we'll helped, just see how good it Natalie helped is me at this. keep everything straight. <laughs> I really She's good appreciated it. And I actually, I don't think I've ever done it before. Does this go like that? Yeah. Really? Before, um, before this never, project? Mm -mm. Interesting. Because I usually just, I don't know. I, I don't know why. That's interesting, yeah. Well, everybody does things differently, and that's why I lo one of the reasons I love triple play is that, you know, we've got these three different brains that work completely differently. So then these so stay then you together. Just, yeah, these stay together. You just open them up like this, and then we're going to add these next one on. So you're going to add this guy on here, mm -hmm. and this guy on here, yep. and this stem in the corner. Okay. And then you're going to just sew your three rows together. You'll make sure um, you can press before if you want to. On these, be, I just tended to press after they were finished. I found that to be easiest as well because mm -hmm. then you can make the seam go the way you want it and then... Make um, it flat at the end. And mm -hmm. then yep. I press them all the way they needed to be, mm -hmm. you know. Right. <laughs> no twisting. Yeah, and, uh, and I do that a lot when I'm sewing a block together is I'll sew it all and then when I press it, I make the seam go the way it wants to. Now, if it's tiny pieces and it's difficult for you to do that, I would make my, you know, I would make this row go this way, the middle row go that way, the bottom row go that way. You know, it's really whatever works best for you. All right. So now we have these so three rows together. This. Yeah. And you can Hold see how, how this all holds together. And then we're just going to lay this row on top of this row and sew those rows together and then our block will be finished. And that's how you chain piece a block and keep all your pieces together. And there are a few little leaves on these projects. There are quite you know? a few. So I have, I have, what do I have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times four, I have 28 leaves. 48. Four, seven times four? Oh, no. 28. 28. You're right. I don't know why I thought 48. <laughs> Wait a minute. Math is hard. I could have made a quilt with that. That's yeah, true. <laughs> Actually, anything can be a quilt or a runner. It's really whatever yeah, you choose. Whatever I mean, this would be a great, if I did three rows of three. I think this is just so perfect for fall on your table. I do too. It's beautiful. I think it's just gorgeous. Okay, we're at that last row. Yep. She's just going to put this on top of here. And when she gets to those one. seams, she'll make one seam go this way, one seam go that way. So all the bulk, there's no bulk in the middle. Right. Uh, and so it lays evenly on either side you of the seam. You can nest them really easily because they're not, like, trying to go one way or the other yet. Good point. And then you will get to iron this, Misty. Awesome. You are so I'm, I'm going to do a great job. You are. <laughs> I can feel it coming. You're going to do a great job. I'm sure it'll look great on a galloping horse. I'm sure. <laughs> there we go. Make horse blankets for that reason. Oh. That's right. <laughs> Looks great on a galloping horse. See, isn't this nice? <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll show it to you more in a minute. All right. Looks great to me. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it's beautiful. They're pretty gratifying, and they're pretty, um, they're pretty uh, easy. You know, I mean, as far as you don't stress too much over it. So here, look at this darling little leaf. Now I'll show you for real. Yes. <laughs> the seams actually match up. They look great. And what we're going to do then is we're going to put four of these together. So I have two sewn together right here, and then we're going to put these two in the same way with all the stems facing the middle. So they're going to go like this. I think I'll put this this way. 
And so, Natalie, if you want to attach these two right here. Sure. And then we'll attach it to this one right here. Misty, maybe you could iron that for us. It's so handy to have these helpers, you know. Good teamwork. <laughs> we do do good teamwork. Now that little bottom one was one I did very quickly, and so the reason she's like moving it a little bit is because it's I'm probably just lining not up points. It's okay. Yeah, probably not as perfect. It's good but too. all those little imperfections you hide in the seam, so you know, it's really doable. Yeah, you just have to like look at the points that you want to match and then ease in the rest. Right. And if you'll press that one. Sure. And a lot of times, if you have something off a little bit one way or the other, it's not a big deal. It's not going to show up. That's exactly right. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to sew these two together, like to this one. And the nice thing about sewing a block like this that has all these little junctions is that at each one, you're going to reline it up. So you're, it's going to keep your block very square. Mm -hmm. And so you're just going to start and you'll just reline it every little seam. You'll sew till you get to the next seam. Make sure those seams are going the right direction. And I stop after I get past that and then check the next one. That's what I do. I check yeah, every seam everyone. as I go along so that one the seam is going this way and one seam is going that way. So and that I love having those checkpoints along the I way. I do too. I do too. It yeah. really makes for a nice block. Now, one of the reasons that I made my flying geese and my leaf out of the same block, I could have done all my leaves out of one set and all the geese out of one set, but I love the scrappy look. I love them all mixed up. Yeah. I actually, there are more uh, dark fabrics in this line than there are light fabrics. So I actually brought in a couple of solid light fabrics. You know, you could use shirting or whatever, but you can see I brought in some of this color right here, and then I brought in some of this lighter color um, right here, like on this one, uh, because I just didn't have enough lights, and I just wanted to keep the scrappy. And I needed yeah. to make more, right? Yeah, I needed it to looks make great. More. So this is our leaf block, all sewn together. It looks darling, and what I did was I decided I was gonna put flying geese all the way around it. And so because they're four and a half, they match up exactly, there's no measuring. So all my little flying geese, I just sewed three of those together and put them around the sides and put my uh, two and a half inch uh, corners in the middle because you, you have a few left over of your light ones and you have one left over of a red. And so on this quilt right here, and I've kind of whizzed past the uh, flying geese, but um, you know, you keep those all in a pile. You're gonna make, make those, a whole bunch of, a them. Whole bunch of them. Yep. And then um, we, I sewed these together in threes, you know, one, two, three, like this, and then put it on the outside of my star here, and then I had three here, three here, three here, and so they were all sewn together in threes, and then I just attached the corners to that last row when I put them on. Now, Very this, cool. this is exactly, those three blocks just sewn together, this is exactly what it is. Those three blocks, every single block is surrounded by geese, which makes a double row right here. So right here, you're gonna see that double row. So here's our double row of geese, and it really is just what happens when we bring the blocks together. Pointing like that. at each other. Yes, yeah. they just point it at each other. It looks a little bit like an hourglass. Yeah. yeah. And so as I'm making the second one, I changed it up a little bit, and I put my, I put my geese on the top and the bottom of the block. So let me move this down, so make sure we can see this in the picture. So my flying geese are on this side and on this side, but then in between, I did a whole column of them. I love it. Where, you know, I stacked them all up, which of course means since I had this guy, you know, going the same direction as these, it makes a square here and it echoes the square here mm. and down there as well. I didn't even notice that until just now. Yeah, and then also on the corners of these, I didn't use my light, I didn't use my light, light, um, square in the corners. In these corners, I put a dark square. And so I made use of some of those, you know, one extra yeah. squares. I and love it. it just makes a beautiful quilt. And I love the idea that, you know, the leaves are falling, you know, they're going south. And you added a All little the border to this are one going too. South. Yes, this one I felt, I don't know, you know, sometimes I think um, a runner warrants a border and sometimes it doesn't. And I just thought this one, uh, I just wanted just to see, yeah, yeah, just needed a frame. It looks great. Yeah, I love the look of it.
It's All right. Such beautiful oh, fabric. wait. One more thing before I go. Because this fabric is so distinctive and it's so fall oriented, I just wanted to show you. We made a couple of these in brights. They're so cute. <laughs> and so just by changing out the color, you're going to get a whole different look in your pattern. And so. You know, this could be a really fun bright look as well. Yeah. You know, you could do Christmas leaves, you know, whatever you wanted to do. So a lot of times we see, you know, we'll see a, um, a quilt made in a fabric and you feel like that's the only way it can be made and it just isn't so. Have fun with that fabric, you know, choose something different. Let's see what you do with it. So this is the bigger runner and it ends up being 21 by 69. So it's a great size, nice long, long runner. It has a stitch pattern of fall leaves on it and we put this back. Beautiful. And I think for the back you need about a yard and a half for, for each one. Mm -hmm. And the yard and a half also will include this little bit of border. This one we just bound, we, no border on this one. This one has the same back and again you can see the pretty fall leaves on here. Um, and it ends up being 16 without the border by 48. So really, whatever size you want. Honestly, one of the things I love about runners is that Natalie has a square table. So sometimes you can just take a square and border it out a couple of times. Or I could put four squares of leaves in a square rather than drawing them out long. And so, you know, you can have, just have fun with it and do whatever you want. There's so much room for ideas yeah. and different sizes. And yeah. personalization for whoever it's for. Absolutely. Yeah. And now we're on to Misty. All right, so as we turn things around, and I made a giant block this yeah, time, so I, I made love it. this really big leaf. It's and very cute. I think it turned out really cute. It's really quick, and it's assembled much like Jenny's, only larger, but it's based on this uh, nine patch block that you can see here. All right, to make my quilt, you're going to need two charm packs, and I used Love Lily by April Rosenthal for Moda. You'll also need one and a quarter yards background fabric, which includes your inner border. For your outer border, you'll need one yard, and for the backing, you need three and three quarter yards with horizontal seams. We're gonna start with our five inch squares and just lay them out into... This is such a happy line. It is so it's cute. It's really a cute little line. So bright. I'll just find a few different ones in here. We'll just and I might need one of these on my porch just to... It would be a good porch quilt. A great porch quilt. Yeah, it really would. It'd be a great baby quilt, too. It would be a great baby quilt. Or a lap so quilt cute. for somebody, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd just be so cute. Lots of options. It's just cheerful. It's one of those things where when you look at it, it just makes you kind of smile. Trying to make sure I've got some variety in here. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, which one? Which one do I want? another blue or a yeah yeah that little blue would be good this one yeah perfect cute all right and so then we're just going to sew these together um i used the same method that you taught mm -hmm. um where you just fold them across like this and, and just sew, sew down, down. Sew down sew down yep and then nice. add your next one and i have a finished one here and so you can see here's our finished nine patch That's and you can adorable. see where they fit. And so we're going to make three of these. One, two, three, here, here, and here in the All quilt. Right. And then let's talk about how we're going to make the points of our leaf and our fun little stem down here. So on this, I did it a little bit differently. Instead of laying it out um, a full nine patch and you know cutting it corner to corner or anything like that, I wanted to cut back on the waist. And so I actually just laid out um, I believe it's, is it seven? Six. Six. Six of these. And so we're just going to lay This was out. really interesting to me. Again, this is a brain thing. Yeah. Completely different way of doing it. This makes a giant half square triangle it, out of a nine patch. Exactly. But with, uh, but you actually keep the same size and it's just so fun to see how you did this. And so we're going to start by sewing uh, these three. I always did my three first. And so then now we can just sew these together. So I'll start here, Jenny. Okay. Hand you that. And there's that one too. Add 
on to this one. There we go. Now, if you want to press that. And then this one as well. When I was sewing these together, I always like to start um, at the bottom. I don't know why, this is just the way my brain works. And it was easier for me to come through and nest these um, to start with, to just make sure that this seam nested. Okay. And so I'll do that first. And then we'll come back and add the single to the top. And I'm just gonna sew all the way yep. to the end of this. Exactly. And then we can just go ahead and open and add this one since we don't have anything to nest there. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a longer ruler. All righty, right. there we go. Press it? Yep. And how many of these points do you need? So you need um, four, just like your normal okay. uh, leaf block. So you're going to do this assembly four times and then you do something very similar for the stem but you just switch it up a bit and so what I did for this is I just laid this straight on my mat and I laid my ruler corner to corner but I made sure I have my quarter inch overhang so that I'm not going to lose the points that I've done here oh yeah and so then you do the same thing on the outer edge just a quarter inch overhang from your point and then, the yeah, that'd be great. And I think that looks good. And then I'm just gonna trim off this excess. There we go. And don't throw those away. Yeah, you can, <laughs> we're gonna need a few of these for our stem, so hold on to those. I just put them in a pile. And then I cut um, 14 and a half inch background squares. You can see I have one here. And then we cut this in half diagonally. And we're just gonna pair this up with our piece here. And that will match up and give us our correct quarter inch seam. Very cool. Surprisingly easy yeah. for a, it's, a it, sort of different technique. It is because the whole point is we're wanting to sew um, point to point there. That's where we want our seam to be. And if we didn't cut this off, we would have all these wasted pieces that then wouldn't fit in our block. And I didn't yeah. want to have that. And like I said, you're going to make four of those to make your points of your leaf. You can see how they set in just like that. Now for the stem, you can see down here, this is done almost exactly the same, but I have it together here. And the only difference ah. is you put a background square, a background five inch square instead of a print square here. And right, then it's right in the middle, right in the middle. Then it's assembled the exact same way. You can see we just trimmed it and sewed it together. Awesome. And so this is the basis of our stem unit here. Mm -hmm. And before I sewed all of these together, we are going to add this stem. And so let me show you how we did that. So remember I said to hold on to a few of your leftover triangles. We're going to sew five of those together, just end to end to end, like I've done here. And this is what's going to make our stem. You can see the patchiness of it in the stem itself so and cute. this is how we did it because these triangles have some bias this is just like making you know bias binding sure, it'll, curve. It, it'll curve and so I was able to get this nice curve of my stem and so I just went ahead and pressed it in half like this and then I'm going to trim it off straight to begin with this is very clever Misty very thank clever. you I was excited when it worked out there we go. And then that, if you will um, press under just one end, about okay. a half an inch or so. Cool. I just eyeballed that. Actually, wait. Do you what? Want, I can actually just sew across the top. That's and true. Flip it. That's true. Do you want to do that Let's or do, do you want to just? Yeah, I guess, I guess it is your call. It's your it, quilt. It doesn't matter either way. I top stitched once I put it down, which uh -huh. is why I didn't oh, okay. sew it at this point. But you totally could if you don't want to um, mess with it. I just ironed it under just like just a little bit on one side, right? Or you can press it the way that when you open it up, mm -hmm. that might be easier okay. to turn it that way. Yep. All right, we'll do it just like this. Exactly. Lots of ways to do things. Absolutely. And then I'm 
going to repress just to make sure that that is nice and Yep, and we'll lay the way you right want there. it. Yep. Okay, and so then what I did is I started with that piece that I turned under, and I think I am going to use all of this, but I eyeballed it first. Um, I, when I was making it, I sewed more than just the five. Um, so let's go ahead and press under the bottom end too so it's ready to go. But you can eyeball it, and if you want a shorter or a longer stem, um, I just kind of checked and then trimmed it off. Down. Yep, exactly. There you go. All right. So now we're going to take the raw edge and we're just going to kind of overlap the top and you can kind of position this as you go. If you want to pin it, you can. I totally just, just eyeballed, eyeballed it. it and played with it at the machine. But you do want to make sure that you're over the bottom of your point there. And we're just going to sew a quarter inch down this side. So Jenny, if you want to do that and you can oh. curve it however you want. Yeah, so um, when you fold this over, do you start it over here so you can fold this y over yep. the middle? Yeah, I actually just kind of lined it up right with the point. Okay. And then there we go. it worked out fine. Alrighty, I like to put stems on this way. This is one of my favorite ways. And I love that you can get that curve effect because right. of the bias. And we're just around here. Exactly. Kind of an interesting concept. I didn't, I, I thought about curving things in that way. I feel like I have yep. some ideas. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And so then we can just roll it back and I went ahead and pressed it. Yep. If you want to roll that and give it a good, good press, Nat. Yeah. So it can stay. Yeah. Whenever anything is I on the bias, you, it has give. Yep. If you had any trouble too, you could probably do some little clips in here yep. just to give yourself a little. You totally could. A little bit of flexibility, but but really pressing it down will make it stay in place. And there really is no right or wrong way to do that. Think about leaves in nature. You know, they come in all different shapes and curves, mm -hmm. and um, that's part of the beauty of it. And you could do it straight if you want. You could do it the other direction. Exactly. And so now we're just going to top stitch right along the top, side, and bottom edge. Awesome. And I just did a straight stitch on mine. I shall do the same. Awesome. It hides the little seam. Yep, so you have no raw edges that are showing through. I'm just thinking of all the curved blocks. That like you could do. All the interesting curved piecing that you could do that's not actually pieced in. If you're using yeah. that style on just a solid background, you could just make. I know. This is how, kind of, how I do my cathedral windows. Whatever yeah. kind of arcs that you wanted to make. Like, and, that and would be so very cool. You can see how that fits in here just like that. And we assembled it in a giant nine patch just <laughs> like Jenny's. And then I just added a two and a half inch inner and a six inch outer border and it finishes up at 55 inches square. So it's, it's a great so baby quilt. Cute. So what cool pattern did you use on this? This is called Daisy Days. That's it's really one of my cute. favorites, especially and our, for and the backing babies. On this. this awesome oh, polka dot. Isn't that That's darling. such a great, really great cute. Back. Yeah. So yeah. I think it turned out great. So it's super cute. I love it. I love it. Awesome. So Nat, you're up next. All right, am. So this is my quilt. It's called Scattered Leaves because I did a few leaves up here and a few leaves down there. Here, let's kind of kind of shall we pull this up a little bit so they can see. Yep. It so has it's such a, a little bit mirrored, you know, so I have a, a group up here in the top and then a group down here in the bottom. It's beautiful. So it's what that beautiful. means is you can follow the direction or the diagram if you want to, or you can mix and match and put your leaves any which way you want. There's a lot of, um, a lot of variety and layout that you can play with as you want. It's, it's so awesome, <laughs> and it has such a clean, kind of modern look, you yeah. know, for the leaves yeah. tends to go toward fall colors, and this just brightens it up and oh, makes it so This collection is just gorgeous. Well, the collection I, is gorgeous. I didn't want to lose my light or dark prints, so I went with a gray background because I thought the colors really popped nicely off of that, That's but it wasn't, beautiful. Beautiful. It, wasn't yeah. it was a little more subtle than like white or black. No, it's perfect. So. To make my quilt, you'll need one layer cake, and I've used Ladybird by Crystal Manning for Moda Fabrics. You'll need four and a half yards of background fabric, and that includes your inner border. You'll need one and three quarter yards of outer border, and nine yards of backing fabric with vertical seams, or three yards of a 108. Okay, 
We've done so, them like all different ways yes. today. So I'm going to start by talking about the background. These um, blocks finish at 12 and a half. So anywhere you have a, a negative space block, you need a 12 and a half inch square. Okay. So you'll cut a bunch of those. So, so that, that's actually really smart because you don't have to have all these different measurements. Right. You just put another block And then block it just in. goes together just like squares. So you're going to cut um, a bunch of 10 inch squares to make your half square triangles that are these points because mm -hmm. these match up with your layer cake squares. Okay. You'll need a bunch of five inch squares that you're going to cut on the diagonal to make your stems. Okay. And then you're going to need... She's done hers even a different I way. I know. <laughs> yes, pieced in. You're going to need four and a half inch squares for these corners, which is the, the corner point of the maple okay. leaf block. Okay. All right. So then once you have all your, all your background cut, if you want to cut ahead, that's fine. If you don't, you can cut as you go. I'm, I'm cool with that too. <laughs> but the layer cake was fun. So I planned it out by um, doing the make eight half square triangle method. Okay. So each of these, there's four on a square, and I used um, like these four right here for this block and this block. Oh, okay. So what I need to do when you, when you go through your um, layer cake, I'll go ahead and open this. You need to select sets of three. So I would go through and I would say um, like this piece and this piece, these are going to be the body of the leaf. And by that, I mean this part right here. Okay. And then this piece is going to be the leaf points. The, the For tips. both of them. Yep. Okay. So, so you, you go through and you do the whole thing in sets of three. You'll have three blues and three oranges and three pinks mm -hmm. and, and whatever, whatever variety you want. And I just mixed them up and then set them in lines uh -huh. so that I could keep them all together. Um, and then, then you're going to start with making your half square triangles. So if we know these two are our bodies and these are our leaves, what we're going to do is we're going to take this one and draw a line diagonally from corner to corner. So we're just going to draw a line. Didn't quite get that one over there, but I think you'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's done a few half square triangles. Yes. It does tend to work easier if you go like middle out. That's true. Yeah. So. Ah, uh, she's having just, pity on me. I'll just add it a little more there. There we go. <laughs> okay. And now you're going to stack these together um, with your print to the inside because you want your right sides to create that half square triangle. And you're going to sew on either side of the line, both directions. Both sides, yep. All right. So speedy. It is so speedy. <laughs> it, it actually is. It so is, speedy. yeah. So satisfying too to get so many at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a great way to make half square triangles. There we go. All right, so now we're going to do the cutting. And the cutting on this is super simple. So if I, uh, you can do the diagonals first or the straight across. It doesn't really matter. I always do the straight across because the diagonals have a line. So yeah. if I get lost, I can just go back to the line. Right. I mean, hopefully you don't get lost. So on you cut a, both the diagonals. directions, horizontally and vertically. And I usually look at these cross points in a seam mm -hmm. because this part is probably going to get trimmed off when I'm squaring. And I want to make sure that I go through the middle. Okay. Then you just do your diagonals. And then I'm going to do this way. Well, actually, I'm going to go this way. So you can do it either way, but if I go on, on the top, then I just have to hip over this direction right. instead of going over my arm. Okay, so then what we're going to do is press these all open, and then we'll square them up. And while she's pressing, we'll talk about cutting these guys. Okay. Okay, so these, what we're going to do is we're going to stack them both together because they're going to get the exact same cuts. And I'm going to cut four and a half inches um, in a strip because these all need to be four and a half inch squares because they make up these middles. And four and a half is what we're going to square our half square triangles to. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I do a four and a half, pull that aside. I've got one more four and a half over here. And this piece, 
goes in the stem. Nice. So set that aside, and then you can stack these up if you want to, or you can just do them one at a time. It's not a big deal. So this is a little extra piece that we don't use. Um, and the other thing, as we're going along here, you'll notice that we only use three of these squares, and we have a stack of squares left over. So these three go in our leaf, and this one is extra. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it anyways, because I have a bonus project at the Ooh. end that I made with all of these leftover pieces. Awesome. Okay. So if we have our four and a halfs, oh, one more thing, sorry. We're almost ready to start assembling. We do need to square our blocks, and we need to make our stems. Okay. okay. I, got, I just about got ahead of myself. <laughs> so she's, close. She's going to get ahead of herself today. I am. She's running fast. <laughs> okay, so to make this stem, we're going to take our five-inch squares, and we're going to cut right down the middle. So we end up with these little pieces. And then, um, and I, I pretty much, because I'm making two blocks at a time this entire mm -hmm. time, I do two of these, and I just do a little finger press to line it up so it's super easy. Um, and then I finger press these two as well. You have, you have a lot of, of stuff to work with, so if it gets off, you're just going to square it. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But I did finger press because I was trying to be <laughs> middly and proper. Measury, <laughs> all the words. Yep. So I found it was easiest to you know, do one, one side and then flip it over and put the other side on top of it. All right, I'll do it. Misty probably has your square square. She does. Yep, they're ready. Um, as, a quick, as a quick reminder though, I didn't press this until after I was done. And then if you, um, as you line this up, you can also still eyeball that this point lines up with that point, and then you end up having good square squares. That's so awesome. if you lose that middle, that's okay. It can, be, it can be lost a little bit as long as you watch these points, and then you'll end up with a nice thing to square. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna square all of these to four and a half while mom's making our stems. And the way that I do that is I put my Here, Misty. 45, uh, 45 degree, do you wanna do this one too? Sure. Thank you. Happy, happy to. On the end, and I make sure that it's lined up here with the four and a half inch line here, that this line goes into the corner, and we've got four and a half on this side. And if this cut side isn't um, super straight, you can move it in a little bit and then trim both, both sides. But this side looks good, it's very straight, so I'm gonna get it all lined up, and we'll go through and square these. So I'll cut. I'm going to do them all because I want to show all or both blocks. It'll just take me a little bit. I had to check my little measure, middle thing over here. I never noticed that before. The, uh, the corners? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's a fun trick. There you go. Thank you. a little bit off. Honestly, yeah, there are a lot of squaring tools that are out there. Yep. And the block block would be ideal for this style. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't iron it, you could use a clearly perfect slotted trimmer for those. That's, That's true. true. But any square with a diagonal will work. Uh, it just helps you line it up corner to corner. Yep. And uh, I just have a couple more. Yeah. I'll keep these for something. <laughs> for, <special>. nothing. <laughs> for nothing. For <laughs> nothing. You take a picture to show how proud you are of all the squaring all that you the just trimming. did. All the trimming. And yeah, then you go. throw them away. That's there right. <laughs> Promise. Maybe you can stuff a dog bed with That's them eventually. That's true. Okay. <laughs> She's like, oh, mom's going right. to keep one more thing. It's true. <laughs> if you wanted to, you could. They make good stuffing. They do. Some 
I love seeing all those squares come together. So neat. Oh yeah, it's kind of the best part. And you're part. so quick yeah. at it. Yeah, get a lot of practice. You do. Just spin it around and line it back up and you get like, you know, you can just, you know exactly where you're supposed to put everything. Yeah. Okay, same thing with our stems. We're gonna square those to four and a half. And the trick here is to look at the center line. So you just kind of want to eyeball it and put it right down the middle. And it doesn't matter if you're closer to, to one end or the other, you have to square both sides because you're not going to get super close to that <laughs> four and a half inch mark. So I, I eyeball um, my stem and it looks, typically there's like a quarter of an inch on each side. Uh, the thing about the stem is technically it measures an inch but if yours aren't exactly the same, it doesn't matter because oh. I never match the stems up in this entire quilt. Right, so they're not intersecting Because with it's not, I don't specifically measure it because I'm, I'm worried more about the four and a half inch squares mm -hmm. than I am about the stem width. Right. Don't stress about that. You don't have to go back and make sure they're all the same size. Well, and mine are going to be wider because my quarter of an inch is skinnier. Yeah, You know, yeah. Exactly. so you're just squaring your block to four and a half. Yep. Makes sense. Perfect. Yep. So you just eyeball that, make sure that stem's going down the middle, flip it around, stick that into the four and a half inch, and it should still line up. So there's just a little bit of extra waste there, but not a ton. Hmm. I'm gonna eyeball that again. I love seeing how everybody does these different. It's fascinating. I, know, I love it. It's pretty simple to get these pieced in like this. I didn't have any trouble with it. I enjoyed this quilt. I yeah. had to make it a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, people always ask me, how many of these do you make? And I'm like, we at least make one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so from our three squares, we now have all the ingredients to make two squares. Right. Two, two complete two blocks, leaves. right? Leaves. Yeah. So you start by laying them out. I usually start with my <laughs> corners and my stems because I know those go in the same places. And then you're going to put all of your, oh, <laughs> I'm right-handed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so all of these match up like this. I just love this fabric so much. All it's those so florals pretty. are so pretty. Yeah. And then you put your half square triangles up here. That one goes there. Perfect. It beautiful. just looks beautiful. Yeah like that. So then you're going to go ahead and sew these two, these two, these two, and keep them chain pieced okay. and add these ones. So I'll hand those off to you. Perfect. I'll slide these over and we'll build the next one. Lay out the other one. Yeah. That goes there. These part of your blocks? Nope, those oh, are my those are your extra extra. That's right. I forgot. My leftovers. And then we've got. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And I just really like I liked the variety kind of of showing them with different things. I do think it could be really fun to completely scrap it up. Yeah. And just choose however many you need to make all your half square triangles and then mix and match your blocks in the middle. It could be really, really cute and fun. But for this particular one, this is what I did. I think you got it going way. the right way. That's right, is that yeah. right? Yes. Okay. All of a sudden I picked it up and I'm like, <laughs> wait, I didn't look. Nope, you got it. All right, we're gonna open these up. Yep, yep we did. Flip that up. And Two more seams and you're done. Exactly. And again, this it is the big, so this is the big, the big one. You know, you can see how it's all hooked together, you know, and we didn't have to pin. You don't mm -hmm. have to do any of that. You just keep it the together when you're that, sewing it. That's so cool about that is you know your half square triangles are going in the right direction because yes. everything was assembled in the, in the right order, which just makes it a little bit less mind work, a little bit less stressful, I guess. Yeah. I like it. I do too. I also love method. your gray background. I enjoyed that too. It's just fun I, then to I didn't lose any pieces. Right. And when you when you get a, um, a layer cake, there are inevitably going to be some light ones. Mm-hmm. This way you were able to keep all those. Yeah. She's 
tapping her nails at me. Did you just see that? Sorry. <laughs> She's like, hurry up, Mom, hurry up. No, you're fine. No worries. I'm just enjoying you watching you sew. All right, one press. It's fun and we'll to see have it come together. Block. Whoop, there we go. So pretty. Yep. Yeah. And it is fun how this the little petals just seem to go. And that's it. That's our first block. And they go just wherever you want them to go. Yeah. <laughs> so you've actually got what? So one, I two, have, three, four, I five. believe it's a six by seven layout. Because wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it's six by seven layout. Um, the quilt, let's see, I did a two and a half inch inner border and a six inch outer border mm -hmm. and um and the quilt measures 87 by 99. Ooh, that's a nice big awesome quilt. size yeah. we quilted it with sticky buns <laughs> <laughs> one of our favorites and this is the backing we used isn't that beautiful so pretty beautiful print really pretty awesome okay so remember how we had all those little squares set aside Some pieces left yes. over. one a little bit of magic that happened is that when i was assembling all the colors all the sets of three I had three squares left over that didn't match at all. Three full squares, and I decided that I was gonna make them into half square triangles. So I took that leftover square, and I did the same, same method, drew the line, made the X, made all the half square triangles, and then I put all of the, um, all of the square squares mm -hmm. together in the middle and put the half square triangles around the outside edge to make this cute little guy. I just oh love it. Gosh. So it's literally just, the extras is leftover Every things that you a true already bonus. had a true bonus yeah because you have enough fabric in your in in your uh supply supply list yeah. thank you yeah. you'll have all these little four and a half inch squares mm -hmm. cut out you'll have you know oh. enough 10 inch squares to make your triangles and this is just a little bit of extra backing so and a little cute. bit of binding oh, cute it's really pretty and look at the back well, yes, this fabric is, is beautiful. It it's is probably gorgeous. my favorite print in the line. It's gorgeous, I love it. yeah. But this is what just a, a great little 28 inch. Uh, yeah, it could be a table topper, a wall, wall hanging. hanging. Yeah. Literally, if you boarded it but a couple also, of times, it could be yes, a baby quilt. Also, you could make it into a baby quilt. It could be the medallion of something fun you're doing. Mm -hmm. like, I think that should hang in our studio for sure. Yeah, it's just it's so really cute. cute. It would be great. And I love <laughs> a true bonus where yeah. it's like you don't have to add any extra fabric yes. to your supply list to get this right? out of your left. Great little project. So that is That's awesome. It. Great I job, hope you girl. love it. Great like job with the lovely do. leaves. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Well, that's it for our Lovely Leaves Triple Play. We hope you enjoyed today's tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you are not already part of the Missouri Star Quilt family, you can hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.